Dante's vaccination. You know, like I said, you know, this, this guy is not afraid of nobody. You know, he has big balls. Like, uh, I can't say about that, Caleb Plant or Ronaldo or all these other fighters. Hey, hey, Carlo, if you're watching this, I know you did an interview, you say you would knock David out. Hey, man, I think that would be an easy fight to make. You want to fight, we want to fight. Fuck uh, Caleb Plant, fuck Canelo, you know? Let's make a, the fight happen. You got balls, we got balls, Let, let's make it happen. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So you heard it right there. You heard David Benavidez's father, Jose Benavidez Sr., say Canelo has no balls. Then he says, Charlo, you got balls, we got balls, let's make the fight happen. I'm telling you guys right now, the walls are closing in when it comes to Canelo Alvarez. You have so many professional boxers that are losing respect for Canelo Alvarez. And the worst part for Canelo is the majority of these guys that are losing respect for Canelo are Mexican fighters. From Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. to Eric Morales, Marco Antonio Barrera, Juan Manuel Marquez, Roberto Duran, Marcos Maidana. All of those fighters have been corroborating everything that you guys hear me say when I speak on this situation. And now you have David Benavidez and his father saying that Canelo Alvarez has no balls. I mean, just think about it for a second. Who do you think all of those Mexican greats that I just mentioned, who do you think they have more respect for right now? David Benavidez or Canelo Alvarez? David Benavidez and Team Benavidez, they're willing to take on a Charlo fight knowing the risk of losing. But they're destined to prove that they are the best. Or Benavidez is at least. Benavidez's dad, he said that Charlo is a more difficult fight than a Canelo. Canelo would be the easiest compared to a Charlo. The fact that he admitted something like that and they still want the fight, if David's own trainer and father feels that way, then we know that David, he feels the same way. And if that's the case, that is what you call a real fighter, a true champion. Jamal Charlo and David Benavidez they are willing to put it all on the line. While Canelo Alvarez is going to basically take off the entire year, basically going on his European tour, fighting guys that no one cares about. Now, don't get me wrong. BJ Saunders and Caleb Plant, those are decent fighters. But the problem is the elite, most dangerous fighters is Charlo, Andrade, and David Benavidez. The BJ Saunders, the Caleb Plants, these are supposed to be the opponents that Canelo fights when there's no one else available, right? He's already beat Andre, he's already beat Benavidez or Charlo. Now, you know what? He might as well just unify the belts at 168 because he's already beat all of the most dangerous fighters. That's when you go after those guys. You know, recently, David Benavidez's father, uh, Jose Benavidez Sr., He's been basically saying everything that you guys hear me say almost verbatim as if he's reading the DBN Bible. He mentioned the fact Canelo Alvarez says now he doesn't want to fight Mexicans. And he said when Benavidez had the WBC belt, Canelo Alvarez didn't want the belt. He didn't want to fight for it. All of a sudden, Benavidez gets stripped. Now Canelo Alvarez wants to fight for the vacant belt. Senior also said the only reason Canelo Alvarez said he doesn't want to fight Mexicans anymore is because of David Benavidez. He said, I bet you if Benavidez moved up to 175 right now, Canelo would be right back to fighting Mexicans. You know, it's so funny when you think about it, because once again, the diehard Canelo Alvarez fans, they will often try to compare Canelo Alvarez to Floyd Mayweather. But the funny thing is, Floyd Mayweather, he made a career fighting Mexican and black fighters, right? So you would think if Canelo was trying to be like Floyd Mayweather, he would be focused on fighting black fighters and Mexican fighters, right? But he's not doing either. He prefers to only fight European fighters. We have never seen Floyd Mayweather avoid the best Mexican fighter available 
the best black fighter available to fight some European guy that we've never heard of before. Even when it comes to Floyd Mayweather fighting Canelo Alvarez at age 36, towards the end of his career, fought an undefeated unified champion at 154 who was 15 pounds bigger than him. Guys, do you think Canelo Alvarez would ever fight a young 23-year-old undefeated champion who has tremendous power at a higher weight class. We know he ain't gonna do it at 36 because Canelo is not even willing to do it right now at age 30. David is almost the same age that Canelo Alvarez was when he fought against Floyd. I believe David is 24 right now. So what's Canelo's excuse for not fighting the young, hungry lion that Floyd Mayweather fought in Canelo Alvarez. Isn't it funny how they try to use these inexperienced excuses for why Canelo Alvarez lost to Floyd because he was only 23 years old? He didn't have experience, right? But yet, guess what? Do you guys know that David Benavidez has less experience at age 24 than Canelo Alvarez had at age 23 when he fought against Floyd Mayweather? David Benavidez, unlike his brother Jose, had almost no amateur boxing career. He had 15 fights. Canelo Alvarez had 46 amateur fights. They both turned pro at a young age. Canelo turned pro at 15. Benavidez turned pro at age 16. But Canelo had twice the amount of pro fights that David Benavidez had at the same age. Just think about this for a second, guys. Now that you guys got all the numbers, how is it possible that the youngest guy in the division, David Benavidez, is the most avoided? This is the only guy, before Charlo moves up to 168, the only guy that Canelo Alvarez is avoiding happens to be the youngest of the bunch. So you see why it makes no sense when you try to say Canelo was too young when he fought against Floyd Mayweather, when meanwhile, Mike Tyson was the baddest man on the planet at age 21. Meanwhile, the great Refredo Benitez was a world champion at age 17. And guess what? He turned pro at age 15, just like Canelo Alvarez did. But unlike Benitez, when it comes to Canelo, it took Canelo Alvarez eight years to get in the ring with a top three fighter in his own division and that's when he fought against Austin Trout. It took him eight years. It took Refredo Benitez two years from the age 15 to fight against an elite world champion. Now Canelo did fight for a belt two years before he fought Trout but it was against Matthew Hatton who was a welterweight that wasn't even ranked in the welterweight division but yet they had him move up to 154 to fight for a vacant belt against Canelo. So even when he fought for that belt, that was six years after Canelo turned pro, when he was 21 years old. So it makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense to say a 23 year old unified world champion who's 15 pounds bigger fighting against a 36 year old champion is at a disadvantage because he lacks experience. I mean, something else I can add to that is if Canelo was so inexperienced, why did Manny Pacquiao turn down a Canelo fight twice? That's right. Pacquiao was offered an enormous amount of money. He turned down the fight twice to fight pretty much the exact same Canelo, almost at the same age that Floyd Mayweather fought him at. Canelo fans, I want you to be honest in your heart for a second. If Canelo Alvarez is not willing to fight a Jamal Charlo, a Demetrius Andre, a David Benavidez, right? Imagine if Canelo Alvarez was 36 years old. He had already moved up a gang of weight classes. There's a 23-year-old Floyd Mayweather or a Terrence Crawford or an Errol Spence, a David Benavidez or even an Andre Ward that is at a higher weight class 
He's the champion, a unified champion at a higher weight class. On top of that, he's going to outweigh Canelo by 15 pounds the night of the fight. Who do you think will most likely win that fight? You know who will most likely win that fight. Just Floyd Mayweather alone. We know that when Floyd Mayweather was 23, he had already beat Diego Corrales. He had already beat Gennaro Hernandez, Angel Manfredi, Jose Luis Castillo. He did all of this by age 23. And he stopped the majority of all those guys that I just mentioned. Can you imagine Floyd Mayweather fighting someone naturally smaller than him at age 36? That would be called the biggest cherry pick if Floyd Mayweather even wanted to fight a 36-year-old Canelo Alvarez who was smaller than him, right? These are the double standards that exist in the sport of boxing. Only when you're on the coincidental list can you be the oldest, the smallest, and fans are still going to say it wasn't a fair match because the much bigger, stronger, younger guy wasn't ready. But it doesn't matter what excuses people make for losing because nothing trumps logic. I remember when Juan Manuel Marquez was 37 years old, you had a lot of young, very talented fighters calling him out. Every single time someone called him out, you know what these same fans who make excuses for Canelo now, you know what they were saying then? They were saying, oh man, leave Marquez alone. He's too old now. I mean, hell, they even said that about Lomachenko, who's like, what, 32, 32, 33? When Lomachenko started to look mortal at 135, that was the excuse. Oh, you know, it's because he's aging now, because he's getting old. You see how it works? Golovkin doesn't need to fight a Charlo or an Andre because he's old already. He's 35, he's 36. Oh, but when Floyd Mayweather is 36, it's not too old, it's an advantage. Hell, when Floyd Mayweather was 38, they were saying they wanted him to move up to middleweight and fight Gennady Golovkin. So we know what time it is, don't we? It's crazy, man, when you look at boxing today. David Benavidez, he just recently said, I don't want to talk too much about Canelo because Canelo's fans are way too emotional. If you want Canelo Alvarez to fight the best opponents, people say, oh, why are you hating on him? Why you want to see him fight the best? Why, so he could possibly lose? You must really be a hater then. This is what Canelo Alvarez fans say on a day-to-day -day basis. It's so funny to me because I remember when hating on somebody was really hating on someone. It wasn't too long ago when we seen what hate really was. You remember about five, six years ago when Floyd Mayweather was still on top of the sport? You know, like when you would see all them racist comments, N-words, mayates, going on to Floyd Mayweather's Instagram, posting racist comments on pictures of his kids. That's the true definition of hating. Calling fighters out of their name, not even talking about boxing anymore. Gay weather and all of this gay runner. That's what you call hating when it's personal and has absolutely nothing to do with boxing. That's the true definition of hating, guys. Wanting to see the best fight the best, that's called being a boxing fan. Not wanting your favorite fighter to fight dangerous opponents because you fear he may lose, that's a race fan right there. It's a big difference, guys. At the end of the day, even though I know it ain't gonna happen, Mexican fans should be praising David Benavidez way more than they praise Canelo Alvarez because David is truly following in the footsteps of all of the great Mexican fighters. Truly believing you're the best. Truly being willing to go after the most dangerous opponents, win, lose, or draw. And we already know Jamal Charlo was that way. Speaking of Jamal Charlo being that way, do you guys notice, once again, you Canelo Alvarez fans, do you once again notice almost everything you guys say about black fighters in particular when it comes to Jamal Charlo or whoever we're talking about, some boxer, some professional boxer or trainer comes out and he completely debunks everything you said. For example, when I was really ecstatic talking about the possibility of a Charlo versus Benavidez fight, and I was constantly telling you guys, 
that both Charlo and Andre, they both want this fight. I was telling you, neither one of them are talking about, I have to have 60-40 split. I have to be the A side, you have to be the B side. Neither one of them have been saying this. They've just been saying, let's make the fight. So in the comment section, when it came to the black fans, everyone was excited about this fight. There was nobody saying anything negative about Charlo or David Benavidez when it came to the black fans. But when it came to the race fans, the only thing they had to say in the comment section is, this is BS. Charlo doesn't really want the fight. He's a this and he's a that. Calling them all out of his name. Basically saying, even though he says he wants to fight, he really doesn't want the fight. Remember, these are the same fans that will never admit that Charlo or Canelo Alvarez has been avoiding Andre and Charlo for over six years throughout three weight classes. But soon as Charlo voluntarily says he wants to fight against David Benavidez, now they have the nerve to say he's lying. He really doesn't want to fight him. So you hear what these decafs say on the internet, but then listen to what David Benavidez's own father and trainer says. He says, Charlo, you got balls, we got balls, let's make this fight happen. You see how the truth always comes out, guys? I'm gonna close out with saying this. You know, yesterday I heard a lot of Canelo Alvarez fans' feelings when I reported the numbers that came out when it comes to the pay-per-view live gate for Errol Spence versus Danny Garcia versus Canelo Alvarez versus Caleb Smith. And it turns out Errol Spence did better numbers than Canelo Alvarez did. This is the reason why they still haven't released the pay-per-view numbers for the Canelo versus Caleb Smith fight. And just to correct some of you Canelo fans, because every once in a while I'll see a comment say, hey man, that fight wasn't on pay-per-view. The fight was on pay-per-view. The fight was $69.99, and that came with four free months of a DAZN subscription. So with that being said, you had a lot of Canelo fans trying to defend the situation and they're saying, oh, well, his numbers, Errol Spence's own numbers are only better because he's fighting a bigger name opponent. It's a bigger fight, et cetera, et cetera. That's the exact point, right? Isn't that the exact point? That's what I said in my video over and over again. I said, if Canelo really wants to be the face of boxing, he has to get in there with the bigger names that fans want to see him fight, right? I already explained this. When Canelo fought against James Kirkland, and that was on HBO, that fight did two million views on regular HBO, no pay-per-view. Those were really good ratings back then. It was because he was fighting against a black fighter, and it was a black fighter that really didn't have a chance of winning on paper. So imagine if he fights against Jamal Charlo. Imagine if he fights against Demetrius Andre on pay-per-view. When Canelo Alvarez fans know deep down the reputation of Charlo and Demetrius Andre, they're gonna all rally together and make sure that they watch that fight because this is the one fight that Canelo can lose. So you have to realize this. If you know if, even if you're a Canelo fan and you know that Canelo is fighting someone that's going to be an easy fight, you're not going to be as interested. Even as a Canelo fan, you're not going to be as interested in watching it, especially if it's not against a black fighter. Now, it's different if it's against a black fighter. But if it's against some European guy that not too many people know about, you're not going to be as interested. Not saying you won't watch it, but it's not like something you have to call off work to make sure you watch, right? But if Canelo Alvarez is fighting Andre and Charlo, you have to be there to watch that fight. Why? Because this is a fight that you know deep down Canelo could possibly lose. And this is the reason why those fights do better numbers. So yeah, once again, you're right. If Canelo is fighting the best competition, the bigger names, he is gonna do big numbers. But the problem is, Fighting those big names comes with a cost. It comes with great risk. And that risk is you could end up doing the biggest pay-per-view numbers you've ever done, but at what cost? At the cost of losing? So that's Canelo's dilemma right there. 
And because of that, because of the fear of possibly losing in one of those dangerous fights, he's going to let other fighters continue to surpass him. Errol Spence has already surpassed him. Canelo's next fight will be against Abney Yildirim. Nobody's going to watch that fight. I'm not even covering that fight, guys. This will be the very first fight of Canelo Alvarez's career since he's been a big name that I won't even cover. Abney Yildirim has just come off of a loss. Before that, he was knocked out by Chris Eubank. He has not fought in over two years. The only reason he even has this shot is because Canelo personally requested him as an opponent. Soon as David Benavidez got stripped of his WBC belt, that's when Canelo Alvarez said, he called the president and said, I wanna fight for the vacant belt. And he said, I want it to be against Abney Yildirim. And Mauricio Solomon, he said, okay boss. It's crazy when you think about it, when fans make excuses for why they don't like fighters on a coincidental list, you know? Like if you say you don't like Floyd because of something he did outside of the ring or you don't like his personality. By way of contrast, Canelo Alvarez is telling the fans he doesn't give a damn what fights they want. He's saying to you, I am gonna make this money the safest way I can. I don't care if you guys wanna see me fight this guy or you wanna see me fight that guy. Ellie Setback, he did a poll a couple weeks back asking fans who they want Canelo to fight. Do you know they overwhelmingly picked Jamal Charlo? Canelo knows these things, but he's saying, I don't care what you guys want. I don't give a damn about you guys. My job is to make this money. And you have these ridiculous Canelo decals saying stuff like, oh, well, shut up. You guys are just mad because he's making his money. He's making a lot of money, et cetera, et cetera. Why are you sitting over here celebrating how much money this man is making when he ain't giving you none of the money? He ain't inviting you to none of his barbecues. The only thing Canelo Alvarez can do for you as a fan is give you the fights you want to watch. That's the only thing he can do for you, me, and everyone else. Unless you're in his family or one of his very, very close friends. So why would you be happy that Canelo is not fighting anyone, but he's making a lot of money? See, this is what I mean when I say these are not boxing fans. These are race fans. And let me say this as well. For Canelo fans to say, oh, well, Errol Spence is only doing numbers like that because he's fighting against Mexican fighters and he's fought, he fought against Danny Garcia. You know, they talk about Mikey. Let's just start with Mikey, for example. When you say he's only doing numbers like this because he fought Mikey Garcia, if that were the case, then Mikey Garcia would be doing the same type of numbers today that Errol Spence is doing now. And he's not. It's not even close. Matter of fact, even before Mikey fought Errol Spence, Errol Spence was doing way bigger numbers than Mikey Garcia was in his fights. Same thing can be said about Danny Garcia. Being a big draw in the sport of boxing is about picking the opponents that people want to see you fight. It doesn't matter if everyone is rooting for Errol Spence or if 75% of the fans are rooting for Mikey Garcia or rooting for Danny Garcia. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is consistently fighting opponents that fans want to see you go against. I mean, Canelo Alvarez's numbers when he fought against James Kirkland were way more successful than when he fought against Rocky Fielding or Caleb Smith, right? But does that mean that James Kirkland, but you Canelo fans ain't gonna say, oh, he only did those numbers because James Kirkland, because of his name, et cetera, et cetera, right? Of course not. Something else you guys have to understand when it comes to being the face of boxing. When you are the face of boxing, nobody should even come close to doing the type of numbers that you do. When Floyd Mayweather was the face of boxing, he made almost every fighter he beat a star. Nobody really knew who Canelo Alvarez was. That's why Canelo was fighting on Floyd Mayweather's undercards so he could get a buzz around his name to promote a future fight with him and Floyd Mayweather. 
Man, I was there covering these fights. When Canelo Alvarez fought on Floyd Mayweather's undercard, I remember when he arrived at the MGM Grand. You know how the boxers do their arrivals. You could hear people in the crowd say, hey, who's this guy? Who's this guy right here? And here I am educating these fans, telling them exactly who Canelo is. Floyd Mayweather was so big in the sport of boxing, Canelo Alvarez became a star just losing to him. That's how big of a star Floyd Mayweather was. When Floyd Mayweather knocked out uh, Victor Ortiz, after that, Victor Ortiz, he did Dancing with the Stars. My point is, Floyd Mayweather can fight someone that casual fans have never heard of, like a Robert the Ghost Guerrero, um, a Victor Ortiz, and he still did ridiculous pay-per-view numbers that no other fighter came close to in comparison. So when you say Canelo is only doing low numbers because of the opponent that he chose, guys, Floyd Mayweather did ridiculous numbers against every single opponent he chose for a pay-per-view fight. Canelo's biggest pay-per-view numbers that he did against Gennady Golovkin, those were Floyd Mayweather's average pay-per-view buys that he did fighting against, once again, the Robert Ghost Guerreros, the Marcos Maidanas, et cetera, et cetera. So even though Canelo will definitely do much better pay-per-view numbers if he's fighting against the better competition, the bigger names, what that tells you though, is Canelo is no different than an Errol Spence. He's no different than a David Benavidez or even a Jamal Charlo. If all of these guys get the right guy in the ring, they're gonna do the biggest numbers that they've ever done. Canelo, this proves that Canelo Alvarez cannot carry a pay-per-view card the way Floyd Mayweather was able to. Because if Canelo was able to carry a card on his own name because he was the face of boxing, those pay-per-view buys with the Caleb Smith fight would have been released right now. Guys, do you know that there has never been a Floyd Mayweather fight where the pay-per-view numbers were not released? What does that say? The only time numbers are not released is when the numbers are horrible, which is why sometimes I don't understand why DAZN was willing to invest even more money into Canelo Alvarez when clearly nobody is gonna watch him fight Abney Yildirim. Now, I am gonna watch the Billy Joe Saunders fight, but the question is how much money are they gonna lose for that Yildirim fight? Because of course they're gonna pay Canelo another, what, 15 to $20 million, and no one is gonna watch the fight. Now, don't get me wrong. Clearly, we're going through a pandemic right now, and even before the pandemic, there's no doubt about it that pay-per-view buys aren't the same as they were, but that's still no excuse for Canelo Alvarez's numbers to be so low when people are saying that he's the face of boxing. Numbers do not lie. Canelo fans, you can continue telling your friends if it makes you feel better. Oh no, he is the face of boxing. You can keep saying it, but the numbers tell us the truth. If Canelo was the face of boxing, Errol Spence would not even be competing with him, let alone doing better live gate numbers than him. He wouldn't even be competing with him. And the crazy thing is Errol Spence hasn't even fought Terrence Crawford yet. Now, if Errol Spence fought Terrence Crawford, and let's just say he beats Crawford only in the sake of comparing Errol to Canelo's situation, he would really take a huge lead over Canelo Alvarez for sure. Or if Errol Spence did what he really wants to do, which is move up two weight classes to fight Canelo. So we already know if he did that and then beat Canelo, he would definitely be the face of boxing, not just not just the biggest draw, but the actual face of boxing. So one more time, man, Canelo Alvarez, he's gonna start slowly fading away like Golovkin did when it comes to being a big star in the sport of boxing. You notice no one even talks about Gennady Golovkin anymore. I mean, some people probably think he doesn't even fight anymore. It's because Golovkin, he took the same route that Canelo is beginning to take right now. That's why, once again, Benavidez versus Charlo is going to put so much pressure on Canelo Alvarez to give the fans the fights that they really want to watch. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.
Listen, I'm telling you guys right now, in the world that we live in today, one of the most important things in life to have is a good lawyer. And I can vouch for this one right here because this brother is my personal lawyer. So if you need any type of legal representation, if you need legal advice, if you're having problems on YouTube, on your regular job, or whatever it is, contact lawyer, mediator, and business consultant Issa Israel's law firm. I've been knowing this man for a while, and he has been a true blessing to me. I'm telling you. He's affordable. He will work with you. But most importantly, he's not going to just treat you like a customer. He will have your best interest. So to get in contact with him, go to iilawfirm.com or consultsglobal.com. Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaved it down. Make sure you go ahead and contact my man Scalp Carolinas on Instagram. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called Elo De Key Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, and inflammation and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to elodekey.com, like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram.